That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about when you finish saving the world. The directorial debut of sure, Jesse. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Did that, was that garbled? <laughs> no, perfect. Go yeah. ahead. When you finish saving the world, the directorial debut of Jesse Eisenberg, which premiered at the 2022 Sundance Film Festival. It also notably played in Critics Week at the Cannes Film Festival, and it is being released courtesy of A24 on January 20th, 2023. Directorial debut. I know Jesse Eisenberg is an actor. He mm -hmm. also wrote it. Mm -hmm. And it's based uh, on the 2020 Audible original that he already did with Finn Wolfhard reprising his role. Oh. Mm -hmm. I thought this movie was excellent. Yeah. I So this is the second time I saw it. Basically almost a year ago, really. Uh, and I quite liked it and was surprised the next morning when I woke up. And it was kind of passed over by a, a lot of critics. The basic story is, it's set in modern time in Indiana. Julianne Moore plays a woman who uh, runs a battered women's shelter. So she's like built it from the ground up and there are like, there has like schooling, daycare, housing. So she's done great work. And she lives with her husband and her teenage son. And basically, we see that her teenage son, played by Finn Wolfhard... Ziggy, and her name is Evelyn. Ziggy. She's disappointed in him. He's turned into, like... He's a musician. He's on a platform, kind of like YouTube. He keeps saying he has 20,000 followers. And he does these live streams where he performs music. And it's clear that she thinks that... She's just not happy with who he is as a person. He's self-consumed and narcissist. She's a... <laughs> Salute. Oh. She's kind of like an ex-hippie, rebel, uh, revolutionary type. Yes. Um, so, there's that sort of dynamic between those two. The husband is in the background, very disconnected from everyone. Roger, played by J. Uh, J. O. Saunders. And one day, there's intake of this woman who's there with her teenage son, this kid named Kyle. And Kyle's the same age as Ziggy, and he actually goes to the same school. But they don't know each other. And she is very impressed with him. <clears throat> He is a handsome young man. He's smart. He's very sweet to his mother. Basically the opposite of Ziggy. Mm -hmm. And he's very helpful to Evelyn, Julianne Moore's character. She immediately becomes like invested in him, telling him that she can get him into college. She can pull some strings. She's doing some things that are definitely out of bounds, like trying to bring him food mm -hmm. from home like after hours. Mm -hmm. She takes Kyle to dinner at one point. But things come to a head because Ziggy gets upset with his parents, specifically his mom, telling her she's a terrible mother. And Kyle, Evelyn hears through the mother that Kyle doesn't want to do, like, go to college. He wants to do the opposite of what Evelyn wants him to do. So she, like, confronts him at his school and Kyle has to tell her, I don't want what, what you want from me. And I hope this doesn't affect us living at the shelter because my mom is safe there. Mm -hmm. So the end of the film is that Julianne Moore seems like downtrodden when she goes back to her office. She gets on YouTube and starts watching videos of her son. Hi-hat, I guess. And is the name Ziggy of has been rejected by this girl who we can talk about. Mm -hmm. So he's upset and he goes to see his mom at the shelter and the final shot is sort of like him witnessing her watching his videos. And we she sees that he's been looking at her accolades. So they're both sort of seeing each other again for the first time. Mm -hmm. And seems like maybe their relationship will be on the mend. The end. Yeah, it's really a film kind of... It's like a breakup happened between this mother and son. And, and really it's about them kind of... Reconvening. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like that the mother and son broke up and they saw the people, but then they realized that they yeah. were. Yeah. Um, there are so many scenes. I So the humor is kind of dry, mm -hmm. but I was highly amused. I think the writing is really good and the performances by everyone, particularly Julianne Moore. Uh, Julianne Moore. So, you know, it's interesting. It, it made me think of when she was in Joseph Gordon-Levitt's Don John, also with this actor directing a movie and really giving this other actor just this room to play and she's so good in every scene <laughs> so julianne's character evelyn is super awkward <laughs> uh very flat and at one point she's at her office and she walks up she's waiting for the elevator and talks to her receptionist 
no, no, someone is having a this birthday party and they're being loud. So she has to come in and be like, hey, I didn't know it was someone's birthday. The staff. It's the staff. But like some of the people we're intaking can hear you. So can you quiet down? And they're like, okay, like party snap, fun snatcher. Mm -hmm. And when, when, before Juliet walks out, she turns around and tells the birthday person, congratulations on your birthday. She's, and then the scene with the receptionist, the elevator takes so long and she's trying to make small talk with the receptionist and the receptionist becomes alarmed immediately. Like, am like, I being fired? And Julianne's like, no, it's, I'm just making small talk. Like, the elevator takes so long. I feel like I've met, I've known yeah. several people like this uh, that, that valiantly try to be social, but it's almost just like, just be, just be quiet. Just. They're very subtle things that really demonstrate in a short amount of time the relationship that this mother and son have. One of them is Julianne's getting ready to leave for the day to go to work. Like, she's at the front door. She's grabbing her coat her pocketbook. With her smart car. Uh, drives a smart car. And Ziggy runs down like, hey, can you give me a ride? And she says, are you ready now? Give me five seconds. And she looks at him like, okay. And then she kind of slowly looks at her watch and counts five seconds and then grabs her purse and walks out and leaves him. And I just thought that was such a great way to show like the relationship they have. Mm -hmm. Because he's also... It doesn't seem like he's angry about it after the fact. They're, they're just so disconnected. They're so disconnected that... And, and, and the little bits that you do learn, like she... He's trying to get the attention of Lila, played by Alicia Bow, who we reviewed in Do Revenge, and Yes, God, Yes. And she's this, you know, very articulate, uh, politically minded young woman that goes to school with him. And he's, you know, kind of this self-obsessed... He's kind of dumb. He, he, he's kind of dumb. And he's asking Julianne Moore when he does finagle a ride with her about what... can Basically asking her for political tidbits. And she reads him to filth. And then what we learn from that, too, is that there was a time where... They were very close and that he took, she took him to all these political rallies. And so then we also understand that maybe part of his attraction to Lila is really that she's giving him this, this passion that he, he probably once witnessed in his mother. Yeah. There, when Ziggy tells his parents like F you and F off more than once. More than once, yeah. And it's pretty wild because their reaction to him is like, Julianne's reaction to him when he gets spicy with her, she's very condescending towards him a couple of times. She knows how to get him. That work real it was very well written. When so when Julianne's in taking the one mother who's the mother of Kyle. Played by Eleanor Hendricks, who is a casting director, but shows up in a lot she's been in a lot of indie films, including um uh, Nancy Please from the director of Resurrection, which I recommend. I thought she was very good in this as this battered woman. Mm -hmm. But uh, as she's talking to Julianne during the intake, her son Kyle is standing over her, like supporting her and holding her hand. And the way Julianne is looking at him was so, it was so effective because you can just see that she's like, I wish you my can, kid were like this. You can see the thoughts that she had. And also uh, Angie, the Eleanor Hendricks character, saying like, well, you know what it's like to be a mother and and have a son and have a child and yeah <laughs> yeah i have a kid he ain't shit but i have one there could be a game counting the number of times ziggy says the word lift which i guess is supposed to be like a replacement for the word cool mm -hmm. but i you know i don't know what kids say but is like are kids saying lift i think he's trying to be, or he's trying to make fetch he's happen. trying to make it be a trendsetter oh. trendsetter and everybody around him is kind of they're annoyed by him. Uh, he keeps he, talking about his 20,000 oh followers. And then he talks about like, oh, I got up. I don't know these terms. Upnoted yeah. coins. And, you know, it equals like 80 bucks. And he's, I don't find his character annoying. I actually find him kind of sweet. And I, I love the fact that he's excited about something, which is ultimately what his mom sees in him at the end. Yeah. That she's disappointed in him because he's not who she wants him to be but then when she notices that like he's actually doing something he enjoys he's, and he seems to be good at it and he's engaging with his fans in a way that suggests that he's trying to reach to he's trying to do something that'll make them happy by saying hi in their language and it's he, yeah i actually thought that was very effective because she watches one video where he's saying like he's greeting his fans from different regions and like three different languages and then he acknowledges that there's one fan who's in a region where there was like a storm yeah. so their internet might be out so it's like because his little girl the Lila who he likes who eventually disses him because she thinks he's dumb and we can get into further why but it's like 
maybe he's not politically minded or aware in the way she is or in the way the mom wished he would be, mm -hmm. but he is to a very effective degree because he has these thousands of fans who watch him every week and give him money because they like how he's um, like what he's offering them. It, it's just that he doesn't quite see what's important about what he's doing. The, the folk, his focus is off. Sure. What, like the thing that kind of cuts it off with Lila is he's like, I didn't realize that I could be political and make money. Well, so there's like this. So the, the kids from school go to this like coffee shop or something to perform. So Lila uh, recites a poem about the Marshall Islands, which I thought was really good. I mean, even whoever wrote that, mm -hmm. but uh, she, he takes her poem. Like he asks her, can I have the actual paper you wrote it on? And then he makes a song out of it and sings the song to her. And that's when her feelings for him change because prior to that, he keeps bothering her, like trying to get her attention. And she's polite to him, but clearly she's not into him. But after the song, she seems to warm up. Well, it's kind of, and he kind of has this Bob Dylan type folk artist uh, slant to how he performs it for her. But where things come to a head is that he's explained to her like, yeah, I performed your song on my live stream and I made money. So I realized I can be political and make money at the same time. And she's like, what? You're like, you're the problem. Mm -hmm. So then that's when she tells him, you're just a kid and I don't want to talk to you. But um, I, I thought that dynamic was very effective. And like you said, maybe he gravitated towards her because Lila has the same sort of presence and, 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 ac and action that his mother, that he saw in his mother. Right, because it's about boundary issues and attachment styles. I, I think underlying really all mm -hmm. of what Eisenberg is doing here. And to me that, you know, we... Strangely, as much as our parents might repel us, we also sometimes find those things in appealing. Mates. Well, we inadvertently or we like, gravitate towards their qualities, and yeah. even though some of those qualities might be dysfunctional, but uh, you're calling me dysfunctional. No, so. no, it's I'm not. Um, it's not a thinly layered metaphor for how I feel about you. But it's just funny how, but as humans, I think make those connections when we're we're all kind of basically the same. It's like Mexican food; it's all the same ingredients, just arranged differently. There's a night, as you like to say. There's a night when both Ziggy and Julianne are out late. Because Julianne's out with Kyle taking him to dinner and Ziggy is out with um, Lila and they both come home late and the dad is sitting there in a suit mad and he's like, where were you? We were out. Well, you both missed my chancellor ceremony. So he had this big ceremony that he was being honored. Lifetime achievement. Lifetime achievement thing. And they didn't show up and I just thought like, oh my God. And the way they both reacted to him and then... Like, they were in accord. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the big deal? It's just like the the way the dysfunction is shown is so subtle, but it's so obvious. Well, it's just like, and that is why they rub each other the wrong way, because they're more alike than not, and they're both self-consumed and self-obsessed with what they find important. The scene when, because Evelyn, Julianne, is obsessed with Kyle, and so she's trying to find ways to be around him. So she asks him to run errands with him. They end up at... The nonprofit, they contract an attorney, this woman, who used to actually be one of the battered women in the shelter. Mm -hmm. And that scene is really fun because the woman, Kyle uh, is of Latin heritage and is kind of proficient in speaking Spanish, and this lawyer speaks Spanish. So they're talking, and Julianne can see that he's kind of connecting with her as she gets mad and leaves in her way. Mm -hmm. And then she takes him to dinner at an Ethiopian restaurant. And that was so awkward. It's so awkward. Because she's ribbing him and it's like, what are you doing? This is so inappropriate. But, and then, and she's, you know, oblivious to, because she's so blinded by this need that she has to have that kind of a connection that she doesn't realize the power hierarchy and how, of course, this person is acting and doing all the things you'd want to say because there, he's in a relationship with you that's dependent upon you giving him something that yeah, there's a conflict that they need which he mentions because when she finds out he doesn't want to go to college she shows up at his school mm -hmm. which is so inappropriate it is but it's, it's fun you know you, you know the the road to hell is paved with good intentions but it, it's so you know human i think that she can't see this even though she does have the best of intentions there's a point where ziggy is sitting at the dinner table with his dad and his dad's reading an article about teen suicide that i thought was so funny we, we don't know that first he asked him if he's okay right but then he's like why are you asking me if i'm okay oh because i'm reading this article about teen suicide and you fit the description of like white upper middle like class. white upper middle class with parents who are this blah 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 and so you know and then he goes do you want to read it 
<laughs> I thought that was so oh, funny. Oh, and Kyle is played by Billy Brick, who also co-starred with Finn Wolfhard in the Ghostbusters Afterlife film. Oh, I, again, everyone I thought was really good. Mm -hmm. I, probably my last note is I really like the score. Uh, yes, I like the score as well. Uh, and the song that he's, the opening song that Finn Wolfhard is uh, playing to his fans on hi-hat, it's, it's repeated later on. I kind of liked that track as well. Okay. Um, when he's first going to Alicia Bow and asking her, like, I want to be like you, teach me how to be like you, I felt that it was similar to the Macaulay Culkin scene in Party Monster, yeah. where he asked Seth Green, like, teach me how you know because I want to be... In the donut you. shop? Yeah. What would you give this movie? Three and a half. I would give it four out of five. Do you have anything else? No. Hit the thanks button, listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh,